Welcome back. Seth and Brittany are here with Coffee Kids and Crazy. Crazy. And in this episode, we're going to answer a question. We are. We've been getting a lot of questions from different places. I, I was looking at them. They're, this is like the same question over and over and over again, just worded differently. Yeah, I exactly. think I saw at least five come in. Yeah, similar to this. And a lot of parents deal with this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so we're going to talk about it today. But before we get into that, we obviously have to talk about our meme. And this is probably it's my favorite. both one. of our favorite memes. I love it. We actually need to turn this into a business, potentially. We could. Because we could kill it. We probably, we would just sell it on the Living on Purpose website. Mm-hmm. And we'll just, we're going to have to get, you. maybe it's just sleeves we put over. Oh, koozies. Yes, that's what it is. Koozies See? and water bottles that's and it. stuff. That's okay. A, how this is going to go. So to the meme. Mm-hmm. Here it is. It's just words. So. Drum roll, please. If you're driving in your car listening to us, you need to do a little Brrr. drum roll. That's as good as I got. <laughs> so. There should be an energy drink named 6 a.m. toddler. In my family, it would probably be 5.30 a.m. Okay. toddler. Because the amount of energy that's produced from this child, it's as if they woke up and you said, guess what? Here's a bowl full of candy and we're going to Disneyland. And exactly. then they just stay on that high. Every day is so exciting for them. And it's like the same response when they, you know, I, this is what happened to my parents when I was right in here, I could, I could barely form words, Uh but I could, I could talk. I woke up my parents at 6am. It was still dark. I remember I peeled open their eyelids. I think it was my dad. And I said, I need candy. That's what I said to them at 6 a.m. Oh morning when it's dark. Oh my gosh. And you peeled his eyes <laughs> I did. I open pre- to do that? I peered his eye open and peeling it and staring at it. And I, I need candy. I need candy. Because this, this is what toddlers do. They have this They are energy a ball of energy. That I don't even know where it comes from. Mm-hmm. Because I don't, I'm not even sure. And then when you get to nap time, they're not even ready for nap time. No. That's the other part that I don't understand. Like, and or then, or and like then in our family. Crash. Yeah. In our family, we don't do tons of sugar yeah. very often. And so when we do... So like we have the cow, mm-hmm. raw milk, yep. we make ice cream. Okay. Yeah. Bunch of sugar it's after delicious. dinner. And my kids <laughs> go like <laughs> six AM toddler times ten. And they are all bouncing so you, off the wall. You gotta do this in the afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Like we have to have ice cream in the afternoon before it's seven thirty PM. And yeah. usually we do it when friends are over, so it ends up being like, Oh, it's bedtime. But because our friends are over, we're staying up a little bit late. And we're all going to eat ice cream right now at bedtime. Oh, well, there you go. And then our toddler, well, not toddler anymore, Arrow, Mm -hmm. who just hit four, is... Wired. Is very much like the question we got from a parent. Mm -hmm. Here's what the question... You want to ask the question? Go for it. You're, You're doing a great job. Do you have any resources or advice on effective discipline slash consequence solutions for an impressively strong-willed, high-energy, boundary-pressing, fearless three-year-old boy? I just want to pause and say that was a a beautifully written sentence or question. Yeah, you covered every base. I mean, they are just making sure that there's Mm -hmm. every descriptive word that we could get to describe she wants us to feel it. Mom I feel is, like she wants us to feel going, what's going on. <laughs> Help! I have a boy. Yes, you do. Oh, you man. You have a boy. I love it. Um, so I have one crucial piece of advice mm-hmm. for this, and it is it has to be consistency yeah. and follow through. Uh, a lot of times kids who are high energy, pushing the boundaries, full of energy, full mm-hmm, of life, mm-hmm. 6 a.m. toddler going all day. Right. A lot of times we say stuff and then don't follow through, and then our kids just keep pushing, pushing, pushing. And in, and oftentimes what happens, I see, is that's when parent explodes. Right. Parent goes off. They are no longer in managing self-control. themselves. Yeah. Child is in control. And so – in a lot of work with parents dealing with this, I'm like, okay, well, are you following through the, with the things mm-hmm. that you tell them? And parents are like, well, no. Well, like, what are you telling them? I tell them this, or, you know, it's the count to three. If yeah, you don't yeah. stop, one, two, two and a half. 
that three is really far away. Exactly. The three is really far away. And then you don't actually do what you said you were going to do at three years old. And so I think part of this is having consequences available that you actually intend to deliver on. Mm -hmm. So like you don't want to throw out consequences that are like, if you don't stop, I'm going to spank you. But really inside, you don't want to spank them. Mm -hmm. You don't think their behavior deserves that. Like you're yeah. not going there, but you're throwing out these consequences that feel like that are empty not gonna, threats. Totally. And you're actually not going to do it. And every time you don't do it, when you say you're going to do it, you break down trust. You break down your ability to hold a boundary because they yeah. don't believe you. And they're going to keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. And I, I tell parents, I just had this exact call with a woman and she's like, my problem is I say I'm you're going to get a spanking, mm -hmm. but I don't do it. Yeah. And I said, yeah. And so what you're creating is that your child has now learned that you, they don't believe anything you say. Yeah. And so what you're producing is I don't believe you. So I will I will n call you on your bluff 100 percent of the time. You know, you're in the grocery store. If you don't stop asking me, then mm -hmm. we're going home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're not going to go home. You're not. Because you need your groceries. And this you is... You know it. This is the number one problem with this stage is these children are like, do it. Yeah. Show me. Prove to me that you're and, telling me the truth. And we don't. Yeah. We leave them hanging. We you're don't. You're lying to your kids consistently. Which no parent wants to say that. But it's the truth. Mm, you just said that. And it is. It's what's happening, and that's the hardest part about this stage is that I don't think a lot of parents want to admit that I'm not being consistent because mm -hmm. I'm exhausted. Mm -hmm. So personal story, my son, my youngest son is four, so he just came out of three. He is all boy. My older son is all boy. This guy is more. <laughs> I don't know how because my other son's like, give me camo, give me knives. Yeah, so he's got he's throwing knives. <laughs> he owns 50 blades and he's seven years old. <laughs> Hatchets, machetes, knives. We'll talk about that in another episode. It's okay. going to be really good. I love it. But my little guy is uh -huh. even more boy than him. Like I, He just wants to fight me all the time, wrestle mm -hmm. all the time. Like He is nonstop. He is high energy, mm -hmm. impressively strong-willed, boundary-pressing, fearless, all of it. And he was three years old. And we were having trouble at night because mm -hmm. this guy was getting out of bed all the time. Mm -hmm. He was not 6 a.m. toddler. He was 8 p.m. toddler, 8.30 p.m. toddler, 9 mm -hmm. o'clock toddler. Oh, okay. Kept, and, and we're just getting to the point of like, oh, you know, it's only a few days. And, and what me and Lauren call it, our language for it is your parenting pain tolerance. Mm. So like some parents ha have a super high pain tolerance. So it's like, oh, it's been three weeks mm. of your kid getting out of bed. And then you have enough pain to go, something has to change. Where if you have a small pain tolerance, like, oh, it's been two days of you coming out of bed. This is painful. We mm -hmm. need to change yeah, something. Yeah. So having a low pain tolerance as a parent is really good in the context of this, where you can catch it and you're like, you've been coming out of bed two days. Mm -hmm. Over and over, mm -hmm. we have to adjust. We yeah. have to get more consistent. So I literally was like, I said, Here's kind of the process. Throw it out there to you. Um, I do like to run stuff by Brittany, but I haven't <laughs> never run this by her. But so he's getting out of bed. But we had um, we have this crib. So when we were evacuated for a month, mm -hmm. we were in hotel rooms. We were oh. in friends' bedrooms for 31 days. We were not in our house wow. because of the fire. It was so rough. And Arrow at that time was two. Yeah. And he is. We can't figure out what to do. We're in a hotel, and we found this pack and play mm -hmm. with a changing table on top oh that locks wow okay so you can shut the lid yeah and he ain't getting out no kidding oh man it saved our life <laughs> it was like we had him in a pack and play we already had him in a pack and play but he yeah. just climbed out of the pack and play at two years old he's in the hotel bed we're just trying to make it we're just trying yeah we're just trying to survive this hotel room or this guest bedroom mm -hmm. with three kids and us. Yes. And two horses and cows and dogs. and Yeah. Uh, all those the, are not in the room, though. No, yeah. not in the room. But That's it's good. all weighing on us. So we find this one. We stick him in it. And we're like, this thing's amazing. It sounds bad to say. <laughs> Locking our kid in, in a pack and play. But... He was in the room. They with you. sold it. They sold it. <laughs> they it's sold not illegal. It. <laughs> right? So, but then I was like, okay, we need to get this pack and play out. And so I said, hey, buddy, you can either stay in bed mm -hmm. or you can go to your pack and play. 
Mm -hmm. You can go to your crib. I don't want to go to my crib. And and then he started. He his brother would come out and go, Dad, arrows. Yeah. Talking to himself, making noise. I can't sleep. So then I said, Okay, if you leave your bed, you go to your pack and play. Mm -hmm. And if you make noise. August is going to come out and sleep on the couch. Now, he does not like Sleeping when his on. brother's not in there, mm -hmm. and he does not like the pack and play. So I'm giving him consequences that I know are going to motivate him. So mm -hmm. sometimes I think part of the problem is we give consequences that we think are going to work, but it has absolutely zero motivation for the kids. The kid's like, fine, cool, I don't care. Put me in the pack and yeah. play. It doesn't really matter. I'm good. So you have to have consequences that you're willing to deliver on, mm -hmm. you're willing to be consistent with, yeah. and that actually motivate the child. That right. They're going to feel the pain of this. And so, hey, buddy, um, you're fine to come out of bed. All good. If you want to come out of bed, it's cool. You're going in the pack and play. Yeah. What do you want to do? He's like, I don't want to go in the pack and play. I'm like, cool, you don't have to. You can stay in bed. Like, okay. and, I said, and you're welcome to make noise. If you want to make noise, it's okay. But then August can't sleep, so I'm going to bring him out on the sofa. I'm like, Wah. And so he's feeling it. And yeah. so I would literally walk out of the room and stand outside the door where he couldn't see my shadow. Mm -hmm. And I'm standing outside the door just waiting for like a minute because I know he's going to do gonna it. Do? Yep, he's yep, either going to yep. pop out of bed or he's going to start making noise in August. and going to go, Dad, help. So I'm sitting there, and he'll start to make noise. Like, oh, no, buddy, mm -hmm. you made some noise. I'm so sorry. August, will you come on out and sleep on the in the on the couch? And I go there. I would say, because I'm not just trying to take it away permanently. I actually want you to make a different choice, mm -hmm. and I want you to – Earn back what you just lost, so yeah, to speak. Yeah. Rebuild what you just damaged. So I say, you know what? I'll come back in a minute, and if you can be quiet for a minute, I'll bring August back in. So August would go out on the couch. i go, hey, buddy, listen. I'm going to let you go back into your bed in a minute. We just need Arrow to be quiet. So I'd go. I'd, I'd August would go. Mm -hmm. I'd stand outside, and I'd say, and I'd wait. And I'd, I'd pop my head, and I'd, you're doing really good. Wow, you're being so quiet. Good job. And I'd pop back out, wait 30 seconds, like, Hey, you've been so quiet for a minute. I'm going to bring August back in. Now he's like, oh, I yeah. I got I'm a consequence restoring. for what I did, mm -hmm. but I've restored it. It's only been literally like two minutes right. at this point. August is like, he's he's old enough to go, cool, I'll, I'll lay on the couch for a minute, or I'll go talk to mom for a minute, and then mm -hmm. I'll come back yeah. in and go. And so we had worked this out with him. It was literally two nights of that, mm -hmm. and it was like a miracle happened. And you shift. He was quiet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because because he knew I would actually follow through on what I said. Mm -hmm. I would actually do what I told him I would do. I had That's a consequence great. I was so willing good. to follow through on, and I did it. Yeah. And I told Lauren, I said, it's been two days. Watch this. She goes in the next day. I said, here's what I've done. So we had to conversate yeah. because I said, here's what I've done. This here's what's what working. <laughs> this is what's motivating him. Here's what you do. You literally stand outside the door for 30 seconds. You give him a little verbal reward like, wow, you're being quiet. Good job. You keep that up. He'll come right back in. Boom, boom. August even knows. Like, So August was in on it. Lauren was in on it. I'm in on it. And, and she goes in and she's like, wow, that worked. I'm like, I was consistent for two days. Right. And he's got it. He's so sharp. He knows if I talk, I lose my brother mm -hmm. for a minute I come and out. I get my chance yeah. to. Now, one night he did push it, push it, push it. And his brother got to come sleep in our room, oh. not on the couch. He got to sleep in our room. But then the next night he said, do you want August to stay in here with me? He's like, yes, I do. I'm like, cool. Just be quiet. Okay. Silent. I bet. It was amazing. And this is what ownership does. I mean, the other thing that I don't know if you're catching, that, but of what I'm hearing is you had August partner with protecting your culture. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And and so, you know, he had a benefit to protecting this with you. Yeah. And, yeah. and so, you know, you're teaching Arrow that there's consequences to his actions that impact everybody. Yeah. You know, yep. impact you and Lauren, impact, impact August. August. And so he has a decision. Am I going to help protect this culture of my family or am I going to violate it? Yeah. And there's consequences when I violate it. Yep. And so, you know, this is what you're doing. Mm -hmm. and, and and it's great. I, I love the choices. I think it was really powerful and the delivery. And I think the consistency is crazy. It was literally two days of me it taking so five crazy. minutes to follow through. Mm-hmm. And then bring the bring August back in. 
It, and I it was think, like a miracle happened. Well, it, it's a miracle, but the the truth is, is that you had a plan, mm-hmm. and and you decided to be a powerful parent. Yeah. And I say all the time, a parent with a plan is a powerful Come parent. Come on. Because you walk into those moments, you're tired, you're frustrated, you don't have a plan, so you me- I'm immediately to go to bed. To, yeah. You go into the punisher. You go into the dictator. You go yes. into the I'm now gonna fight with you and i'm going to tear down our relationship that's what happens when we wait to figure out what we're going to do exactly until we're in the moment right that's and what we're I mean. like, there's no plan and then you feel powerless mm-hmm. and that's when you get angry can you pull out your fake power and to try to regain some it gets a mess so planning it out ahead of time yes yeah, that's exactly what we did like that's- i really thought this through what's going to work what's going to motivate him what's going to help him How do I follow through quickly? Mm -hmm. How do I help him restore it quickly so he knows I don't just have a consequence for a bad choice. I have a consequence for a good choice. Right. I get my brother back. Yes. And it's literally one minute. Feels like an eternity for him. Feels like, buddy, we're just going to hang out for a minute. You're going back (laughs) and watch. And, but we did plan it out. I included Lauren. Yeah. And you, you, you all came together and same even with, with August in that, like you're, he doesn't have to sit on the couch and sleep alone in that room he gets invited into your room where he feels even more safe so again we're all protecting each other's culture and i think this is the part where parents don't believe me but i will tell you over and over again your children do not believe you because you're not consistent Mm -hmm. that is the number one problem and that's why it feels so boundary pushing so strong willed and exhausting or you don't even tell them what the boundary is sometimes yeah, that is another thing that happens is you they just run into all of a sudden th- this cement wall mm-hmm. and there was and, and that's that's when we just bring down the the punisher usually is like enough you know and again I I'm tearing down our relationship yes. by introducing disrespect like I tell parents all the time I'm like your kid learned disrespect from you from you always. So you think the eye rolling, you think the tone, the back top, talk, the anger, that all was taught to them. Yep. And so you had to take responsibility. And, and when you introduce it at such a young age, they're just going to give it right back to you. Mm-hmm. So I think, again, the, the consistency piece was crucial. The you follow through and then getting Lauren in there. Mm-hmm. Like, so she had like language for it. Mm-hmm. She knew what the plan was. So even our language was consistent. Mm-hmm. Even our consequences. Well, you had this plan. I'm not just being consistent in what I'm doing. Everyone's consistent. Everybody's. And involved. And again, so it, this is this is where the breakthrough actually happens is you have to have a plan. Yep. And I always tell parents, if you're exhausted, you're tired, you're frustrated already, don't tackle this tonight because your best self is never going to show up. Yep. Like if Figure you were it out when you're not in it. Exactly. When you're it, not tired. If you were going to do anything like and you show up on this big day and you're supposed to, you know, you're braving a hard conversation, but you had a rough night's sleep. You had a rough morning with your spouse. And now I'm going to go confront my boss on something. Guess what? Whew, today's not your day. Yeah. Do not set yourself up for failure. Yeah. So I'm always telling parents, make sure that when you go in to address and change what you've been doing, it's a good day. That you've got the support that you need, yep. you've got the sleep that you need, or the rest, or maybe you just went and took care of yourself that day. Like those are really big elements to going and moving And forward. also making sure you've done something to try to connect with your child that mm-hmm. day too. It's like, you know what? We had a good play time. Mm-hmm half an hour ago after dinner we had a good play time we played some legos we did this we actually connected so now tonight when i have to make a withdrawal have to make a withdrawal yeah. i've made a deposit before exactly and i'm pulling on something which is different all the pieces that we've been talking about you know in, in you know a different s- sessions and stuff but it it really is the i cannot stress enough a parent with a plan is a powerful parent you have to engage in that yes. Because you go in knowing what you're going to do. And the part that's so frustrating to watch is like I see people over and over again. They get caught up. They get hooked. They get hooked by the disrespect their kid lands. They get hooked by a behavior. And I'm like, did you not know that that could happen? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know. You know. You you know because you've been facing this for the last month. So it's not new. You just have to change your perspective. You have to look at this as a powerful person. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I am bigger than this three-year-old. Mm-hmm. I can do this. I'm not going to 
fall prey to this child. Yeah. I have to lead in this culture, and that means I've got to change. Yeah. And that's the big thing. Another thing with this, as I'm thinking about it, that I think is really important is actually giving them the freedom to make those decisions. Oh, yeah. Because that whole deal of like, you are welcome to leave your bed. You are welcome to make noise. I'm not doing this to try to stop you from making noise. I actually am totally fine Mm -hmm. if you make a bunch of noise because I know I have my plan ready. I know what we're going to do. I know how this is going to play out. Yeah. And, and so I'm really actually good with you making the noise. Yeah. I'm really actually good if you come out of bed. I didn't talk about that, but the, the crib thing yeah. works really well too because you're like, I don't want to be in here. Like, I know. I don't want you in there either. You can come out if you can be quiet and stay yeah. in bed. Okay. Boom, boom. But because I had a plan, because I gave him freedom, mm-hmm. he quickly learns, oh, this is all my decision yep. causing this. This yeah. is my choices that are deciding what's happening with me. And and that's that's the big thing is like I talk about that parents are often getting in the way of our children learning. They are they are often stepping in front of the opportunity that's going to to help them never have to do this again yeah but it's you know the the messy the cost the time or the the concern of well they're gonna they're gonna scream all night they're gonna be angry this is gonna be bigger of a mess if i just i'll just give in this Mm -hmm. time you know we are so often in the way of learning yeah and we call it parenting yeah but really parenting is i'm going to I'm going to afford you these costly mistakes where it's a safe environment. Yeah. Because you're going to have these later where it's not safe. Right. I want you to learn this now. I want you to learn freedom. Mm -hmm. I want you to learn to trust me Mm and my words. I think that's one of the big things for me is that, you know, your kids not believing you actually translates to all aspects. Yeah. It's not just discipline. It's they question if you really love them in the way that you say that you love them. They question if you really believe in them in the way that you say you believe in them. Mm-hmm. I mean, it goes across the board. It's it's a blanket, I don't believe you. Yeah. Because you're not showing me. Yeah. And and this is the reality that we have to be prepared to face if we're not doing a good job here. Yeah. So I think that this, this little section with the three-year-old is you want to win this one because mm-hmm. you don't want to revisit it when they're 13. You are going to need this later. Yes. These and, foundations built in. And and fighting with a 13-year-old over a cell phone or homework is going to be so much harder if they don't believe you. Yeah. And so that's why doing it when they're three over bed or room mm-hmm. is so much easier to master mm-hmm. than any other way. Yeah. So that's 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 a big one for me. And I, I love your story. I think it's so, so helpful to finding things that are going to work. I mean, mine's a little bit different mm-hmm. and, and that we didn't have a crib and, and we they didn't sleep in the room with somebody. But we had a, their handle had a lock on it just because that's what the house came with. Yeah. But we switched it. I remember it. this. I remember when you We switched this. it to the outside. So we had the lock on our side. And so you could lock them in. We could. And it, and it was, you know, you can stay in your room or I'm going to close the door. That was yeah. the first boundary. Yeah. And um, when they would open the door and they'd come out, I said, you can stay in your room or I'm going to hold the door closed until you stay in your room and go to bed. And then it became a tug of war, and that was no fun for us. So then yeah. it was, you can stay in your room. Or we can know. Or we can have the door locked until you're quiet. And as soon as you're quiet and in bed, I will open the door. Yeah. We didn't ever leave them locked in there ever. No. It was a just one of the boundary lines is as soon as you're quiet in bed, yeah. then we'll open the door. And I'm in the, on the other side going. The whole time. Oh. As soon as I just get in bed and be quiet, you'll unlock the door, open it, mm-hmm. and I'm free. To and is and th- we did. We were right there, and yeah. like just like sitting you were, there, just yeah. standing waiting. there, waiting. I mean, we did have power through the kicking of the door. Oh man, you know. And I would just say, "Oh, that's no fun." As soon as you're quiet and in bed, I'd love to open this door. Yeah. And as soon as I could hear the little bed squeaking and her laying down, I would open the door and say, "Okay, are you ready for bed?" <laughs> yes. Like, all right, I love you. Have a good sleep. Yeah, I'll see you in the morning. Yeah, I mean, and it's instant, and because I'm, I'm, I'm 
showing her that she can trust me. Mm-hmm. Of course, it was Delaney. Um, yeah. Because I'm immediately doing what I said I was going to do. That's it. Immediately. You have a consequence you're willing to deliver on, mm-hmm. and you do deliver on it immediately, and they start learning. Mm-hmm. And I have left a grocery store before. Yep, because you said it. Because I said I would. If you said you will, you got to do it. And so I have been in the grocery store and been, you know, doing my stuff my deal and she's wanting at everything and i had already given her a snack and i said hey i'm not having any fun with you asking me so you can have your snack and maybe when we get home you can have something else or we can be all done going shopping because i don't this is no fun for me yeah and it took one time of me doing that and was it fun for me to walk up to the clerk and say hey aisle 17 you know there's a cart full of stuff i'm sorry because we were almost done yeah but the point is, is that I have to commit to what I said I was going to do. Yes. Otherwise, you will never believe me. So when I say, like, for me, that uh, going way down the line. Yep. Um, Delaney's in cross country a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. And we went to Australia. And I knew that we would land and we could drive to her cross country meet in time to probably see her at some point. Wow. Oh, she stayed home with she stayed, grandparents yeah. while you and Ben went. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. So we, I was thinking you guys were no. all flying <laughs> land. Hey, by the way, you got to go run six yeah, miles go, or whatever. Get, like, get on that. Fun. No, so hopefully you're in business class. So we land and we drive there, and the the traffic is crazy, like because of all the different meets that are happening within this one meet. Yeah. All, and so I'm like, Ben, we're gonna miss it. We're gonna miss it. I have planned so much. You know, my sea brain and my. I'm mm-hmm. like, I have. I promise this child, yeah, I will I told be there. Her. And I am now like. I am not going to deliver what I said would happen. And it was it was a hard trip because on the way home, Ben's uh, grandpa passed away yeah, when we were in Yeah, while you our, were flying. Yeah, it, oh, was, man. it was really hard. So so we are like, there's so much like needed in me to make sure that I made this happen. Yeah. And, and Ben too. And, and But it was just something that we had just both told her. And so Ashley, actually our creative director, she was the one watching the kids and she was there and I'm texting her like, I can't get there. You know, it's like you could see it, but I couldn't touch it. Mm-hmm. So I remember um, her saying that they had just started running and they, they started. So Ben and I figured, I mean, we were like, we were, we're running at the end. Ourselves. The finish so we, line. we get there and she's already gone past us. And, and she, I remember she told us that when she passed where you could kind of see the, everybody and we weren't there, she thought they're not going to make it. And she just starts crying while she's she's, running, while she's running in her race. And so she's running in this race and we get to where, you know, at the end and I'm like, has she come through? They're like, no, she hasn't come through. I'm like, okay, so we're, we're, we're standing there. And I, she had these white shorts. So, which nobody ever had. So I knew that it was her. I'm like, Ben, there she is. And we start screaming, Delaney, we're here. You go Delaney, Delaney. And she veers off of the course and runs to us. starts weeping and is hugging us oh in gosh. the middle of the race, right before the finish oh my line. Gosh. And I'm like, honey, it's okay. She's Go like, run. you made it. And she's just crying. And I'm crying. I'm like, I'm you got to right keep running. Too. You got to keep <laughs> running. And she finishes and she gets her next best time that she's ever had, even despite stopping and hugging us. And then we're all crying. And she's like, you said you were going to be here and you made it. And I'm like, this is it. This is what I'm talking about. I mean, I fought for this at six and I'm fighting for it now when she's 14. Yeah. But the thing is that, you know, she needed that just as much as, as your three-year-old needs yeah. it. Because, I mean, when I said I'm going to be there and I'm literally fighting everything to get there because I know what it means yeah. when I follow through with what I said I was going to do. Yeah. That's how cr- crucial this is. Another word to say, believe you, is trust. Yeah. And if there's no trust because of this, it's not good. No. But if there's trust present, like you built a ton of trust with her yeah. there. Like she knew, I can trust you. With my son, I can trust you. I can believe you. I know you're going to do what you say. It mm-hmm. looked like you weren't going to, but then you did. And that is the most important. Like think about it. Even yeah. with God, he's like, if you believe in mm-hmm. my son, this whole thing with God is on trust yeah. and belief. And are you going to do what you said? Yeah. And with us, it's the same. This is a the mm-hmm. factor in our relationships. It is. So I think the big thing 
for parents, you know, whatever stage your kids are in, this is about younger ones, but I think the big thing is you have to add consistency to your life. Yeah. You know, you have to just like anything else that you would have value for to see change and shift and momentum in, you add consistency and it happens. Yeah. This is the same thing. It's the same thing. So and throw away any consequences you are not going to deliver. Oh, you can't just open Chuck the, them out. Do a prophetic act and just dump out all the Write wooden them down spoons on a piece in the of trash paper. can. Uh huh. And throw just them away. Just do it. So consistency, consistency. Parent with a plan is a powerful parent. That's yeah. that's what we want to remind you for this one. And you can do it. Oh my gosh. What? One more thing. Okay. There's so many parents that are so dang exhausted mm-hmm. because of this type of stuff. And they need the 6 a.m. toddler energy drink. <laughs> yes. One of the conversations, I'm going to try to make this fast, that I've had with parents, I said, you are so exhausted because you are doing all the thinking for them. Oh, you yeah. are not allowing them to think for themselves. So they are not tired. Totally. You are tired because you're trying to figure out how you can go to bed and do all the thinking for them. And when you do stuff like this, this bedtime stuff yeah. that I talked about, it's like, oh, you're actually causing them to have to do some thinking. And I don't have to do the thinking. So I actually have a little bit more energy. Yeah. I got a little bit more 6 a.m. <laughs> toddler and you got a little bit less. I got a refreshed uh-huh. mama. Yes, yeah, I, I got, got powered Papa. Uh-huh. That's what we got. That's 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 a new energy drink. That's powered what we... <laughs> Papa, refreshed Mama. <laughs> there it is. Mom juice. <laughs> Mom juice. <laughs> Mom fuel. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for joining us. Yep. This was fun. I hope that you find consistency mm-hmm. and are able to be a powerful parent. Yes. We'll see you later. Bye.